Hey creatives, I have my 5x7 gel press out, so I thought we could do some monoprinting and how about if we focus on some simple masking and stencil techniques, plus using some layers to build up some texture. For all my projects today I'm using the Pebio Studio Acrylics Iridescent Paints and also the Amsterdam Standard Series Acrylic Paints, but you'll find everything listed below the video. Now, if you need a little bit of a refresher on how to use acrylic paints with your gel plates, then go watch my quick jelly plate printed papers video for some tips. And of course, you'll find a link to that in the description and also in the cards. So a great way to start building up layers using your gel plate is to just start using it. I tend to do a few warm up prints to get my mono printing session going. So I'll just randomly add some paint not worrying too much about it and just take some prints from it and after a while you start building up layers just automatically so there's paint that's left on the gel that hasn't been picked up and that all adds texture as you build so it's also fun to swap between colors and that's another great way to build up textures and sometimes I'll keep within colors that I know will mix well together but every now and then it's just fun to go for colors that you're not sure how they're going to turn out and sometimes those contrasts are what build the best layers. So for this video today, I thought I would stick with that heart theme that I started with Wednesday's video. So I'm using exactly the same masks and stencils that I made in that video. So if you missed it, there's a link in the cards and also in the description below. So these are just hand cut paper masks and stencils that I'm going to be using. And it's just ordinary photocopy or, or printer paper. So for this print, there was a little bit of texture left over from the last two prints. I then added my paper mask and bred a very small amount of paint over the top. I didn't even bother to remove the mask before taking the print and you're left with a very interesting look. Now I'm going to do exactly the same again, but this time I'm going to use a lot more paint and we'll see what happens then. get another very interesting and textured impression and it's just a fun and different way of using a paper mask. Now I've removed the paper mask and I've let the paint that's still on the gel dry a little bit before adding some more paint over the top and I've gone for a contrasting colour because you'll see in a minute how well that works. But first up I'm just going to add some marks with my mark making tools. And if you're wondering about my mark making tools they are stamps that I've carved myself. And if you've missed it, I've got a video about DIY stamp carving, so I'll leave a link for that in the description and in the cards as well. But you can use anything you want. I wanted to keep it really simple today so we could just focus on the techniques rather than worrying about what products we were using. So I'm going to take two prints from this. I put quite a thick layer of paint down and I'm just going to do a very light print just to take that top layer of wet paint off. And when I come to do the second print, I'm going to press really, really hard because that's the print that I want to take off that lovely orange heart from. And you can see how the contrasting colours plus the mark making tools just make this a really beautiful and textured print. So another technique to play around with. So let's have a play with the stencil I made in Wednesday's video and see what effects we can make with that. As these are paper stencils and masks, you do want to be extra careful when you take them off your gel, you don't want to tear them, but otherwise you'll get quite a good use out of them and you'll be able to use them again and again and again. I tend to use mine until they just get too tatty to be usable. So a very effective technique and a great one to play around with and try that on your card blanks as well and you'll get some really great looks. And if you use a heart as well, well, hey presto, you've got an instant Valentine's Day card. Okay, so I want to try that technique again, but this time I'm going to use a print that I've already made and it's dry. And let's see what kind of effects I can get. I'm 
worried this is going to be a little bit too transparent so it won't pop as much as I want it to. So I've let the heart dry a little bit on the gel and then I'm just going to replace the stencil and put some white on the top. And hopefully when we come to do the print, that white, which will be the bottom layer once I've done the print, will help make that heart pop from that print. Let's have a look and see if it works. So another way of adding really interesting layers to your prints. So now I want to show you another way of making a really interesting contrast. So I'm going to add some pattern to this layer with some stamping. By pressing the stamp out on a spare piece of paper, I'm getting clearer images when I go back to my gel plate and stopping a build up of the paint on my stamp. But I'm not sure if you can quite see it here, I'm also letting the stamp slide a little bit on the gel plate and this takes off a little bit more of the paint. So when it comes to the print, have a look at those white areas and that's where the stamp slid over the gel plate surface. So another fun technique to just play around with. So for this contrast, it's back with that heart mask and I'm going to use a dark colour and you'll be able to see how effective that is. So what I'm going to use is Payne's Grey it's just a really nice colour if you're looking to add a little bit of a dark tone to your makes. So another really effective way of adding a texture layer, and this works really nicely with that stamped texture. So I just want to make one more very high contrast double printed gel print. So for this one I'm going to use the stencil again. And I'm going to use the same technique as I did with the red heart on the green background. But this time I'm not going to let that paint dry first before adding the white paint. I'm going to add the white paint through the stencil whilst the other two paint layers are still wet. So there'll be a little bit of blending going on. So as I'm building up my layers through my heart stencil, I was wondering, what are your favourite mark making tools for your mono printing? Let me know in the comments below, and of course have a read and see what other people use as well. I hope you've been finding the tips in this video useful. If you are, then please do like it and share it with other people you think might find it useful as well. That would be great, thank you ever so much. I know all YouTubers say it, but it really does help, and it's a great way to support all of your favourite video makers. So on that note, if you're not one of my subscribers, please do think about subscribing too. It'd be great to have you on board. Okay, so I've got a few more tips coming up because the next thing I want to do is build some layers, but this time we're gonna go off the gel plate. So I'm going to add some more texture layers to those last three heart prints that I made. And it's just another way of continuing to build up textures and layers on your mono prints. So you can mix and match what you do on your gel plate with stuff you do off the gel plate too to make unique and interesting looks. But I am still sticking with printing techniques for these last three prints. So I'm going to use my mark making tools again. But you can also see that I've added in one of those plastic embroidery canvases which always give really interesting looks and are great for using on your gel plate as well as off your gel plate. And also I've got some bubble wrap as well, which is a definite printmaker's favourite. So I can finish these mono prints with a few well chosen marks. And there's also nothing stopping me from using my paper mask and stencils again, so I can get the marks exactly where I want them. So I like how these are finishing. But I do think that that blue heart on that red background just needs a little bit more enhancement. Now there's lots of different ways that I could do this, but I'm just going to simply put the stencil back over it and reinforce my edges with a little bit more paint. 
So we have seven monoprinted hearts, all showcasing different ways that you can use paper stencils and masks. And I hope you've also picked up lots of techniques to help you build up texture with layers, both on and off of the plate. I don't know about you, but I think that one of the reasons that monoprinting is just such good fun is that you discover something new each time you do it, whether that's a new texture or a new color combination, whatever it is. And more often than not, it's the accidents that give you the best results. You're never entirely sure what you're going to get when you peel that paper off. So I hope you have lots of fun in your next monoprinting session. Let me know how you get on and if you've got any questions, give me a shout as well. If I can, I'll answer them. I'm going to be back in a few days time with a new video. In the meantime, feel free to watch anything from my channel and hear some suggestions. Have a super creative day and I'll see you in a few days time. Thanks for watching. Bye.